Have you ever wondered why sharks bite people? Well, if you have, you wouldn't be alone. Scientists have been trying to figure out exactly why sharks do this for decades. For the last 30 years or so, there's been a fairly commonly used explanation by some researchers and shark conservation groups. You might have heard of it before. It's called the mistaken identity hypothesis. The thought process is that sharks could be biting humans because they're mistaking them for their natural prey like seals or other marine animals. And when you look at these images as if you were a shark, you can kind of see where they're coming from. These surfers do somewhat look like seals, to us anyway. But is the mistaken identity hypothesis really true? As we've learned more and more about these animals, there's a growing body of evidence that suggests this hypothesis might not be the best explanation after all. And it's clear that the scientific community is pretty divided on the topic, with some groups of scientists firmly believing in it and others rejecting it outright. So what's the truth? Do sharks really mistake surfers and swimmers for seals? Or was this hypothesis created a bit hastily to try and counter the demonization of sharks across the world? Well, today we're going to dive a bit deeper into the hypothesis hypothesis itself, we'll look at both sides of the argument, and we'll try and figure out whether the mistaken identity hypothesis is a valid explanation for why sharks bite humans. Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. I'm sure there's loads of you out there that have probably heard of this hypothesis before. It's been pretty widely used for a long time. You'll see it being mentioned in documentaries, and it's regularly peddled out by conservation groups after shark attacks. Hell, I've even used it before. But as we'll learn a bit later on, it's maybe not as simple as it first seems. Now, first off, where where did the mistaken identity hypothesis even come from in the first place? Well, it seems to appear first in the scientific literature from the founder of the Moat Marine Lab, David Baldridge. It came during a time when scientists were first really trying to explain shark attacks from a scientific perspective. The most widely accepted theory for shark attacks in the early 1900s was the rogue shark theory. That particular theory was coined by Victor Coppelson and was believed by many to be true. The basis of it was that some sharks would develop a taste for humans and repeated shark attacks would be from the same same rogue shark. The concept of rogue sharks remained unchallenged until the mid-1970s when David Baldridge came up with his own hypothesis. Baldridge noted in some of his publications that some shark attacks may have resulted from mistaken identity. For example, a black-suited diver possibly appearing as a seal. And in his own words, he says, it's certainly not beyond reason that a person so clad might appear to a shark to resemble a seal or other marine animals upon which the shark might be feeding in a particular area especially if the water were murky and the range of vision limited. We can see there Baldridge uses lots of mites and maize, so even he perhaps was hedging his bets a bit with the wording. But after publishing his findings in 1974, the mistaken identity hypothesis received relatively little attention in the literature, with not many people citing his work. That was until 1984, when it was used again by Tricas and McCosker, and this time it would end up in the mainstream. It would continually crop up in research papers after 1984, and would eventually start to be characterized fully more recently in 2013, 2017, and 2021. These days, the hypothesis is now widely accepted by a fair few scientists and the general public, despite no one actually providing further description or evidence to support it. Most of the research papers that mention the hypothesis refer to water visibility and its murkiness in being a factor, and they refer to black wetsuits, which result in the resemblance to seals. Now, the wetsuit factor is a difficult one to evaluate because up until fairly recently, pretty much all wetsuits were black. So we don't yet have the data to be able to compare shark bite frequency between those in black wetsuits and those in different colored wetsuits. But the water visibility one, we do have the data to look at. And while it is true that a number of shark attacks do happen in turbid murky water, the majority of attacks around the world actually happen in clear water during the day where visibility is thought to be good. So this is where we get to our first main sticking point for the mistaken identity hypothesis. Because if the thought process is sharks are mistaking humans for their natural prey because of poor visibility, why is it that the majority of shark attacks take place in good visibility. We can see that a lot of the focus here is being put down to shark vision, i.e. how well the animal can see underwater. Now, we're still learning about shark vision, and there are a lot of things that we don't know yet for different shark species. But to narrow this hypothesis down to just vision, I think oversimplifies sharks as predators. We know that vision isn't the only sense that sharks use when they're hunting. These incredible animals have a whole suite of senses that they'll be using. Vision is one of them, yes, but you've also got smell, sound, detection of water movement and vibrations via their lateral line, the electrosensory organs picking up on minute electrical signals. And to think that a shark would be heavily relying on just one of those senses is probably a bit naive. And instead, it's likely that they're using all of them in combination with each other when they choose to bite an object. One of the most well-known research papers about the mistaken identity hypothesis actually only came out a few years ago in 2021. It was written by Laura Ryan and received a massive amount of media 
attention when it was published. It was even referred to in a BBC documentary called Why Sharks Attack as an explanation for the attack on Simon Nellist in Sydney a few years ago. In the study, Laura and her research team used computer simulations to mimic the vision of young white sharks to show that their actual visual acuity, i.e. how well they see, is poor. So poor that they might mistake a surfer's silhouette for that of a seal, and thus that validates the mistaken identity hypothesis. Now, from a technical point of view, Laura's study was very impressive. Modeling white shark vision is really cool. But the computer simulation itself is just that, a simulation. It can't and doesn't take into account how complex this interaction is in the natural environment. Laura and her co-authors do say in their study that their hypothesis here ignores the other six senses that sharks have developed over their millions of years here on Earth. Which, if you ask me, is a pretty big thing to ignore when you're trying to understand why sharks bite humans. Overall, even though the paper was published widely across the media, I think it's maybe a bit oversimplified. Now, looking at some of the counter arguments against the mistaken identity hypothesis, one of the biggest ones is how these attacks take place. Normally, when a white shark is hunting a seal, it's done at explosive speed. Seals are incredibly agile animals, and we've seen in videos time and time again how expert they are at evading oncoming sharks. And it means that when a white shark is going to hone in on a seal, it's got to be done at high speed from below. And we can see this happening. The sharks rocket out of the water, propelling themselves high into the air. And while they're doing this, their bite has to be powerfully devastating as well. Devastating enough to incapacitate that seal so that it can't swim away and the shark can come back and finish it off. Their ability to recognize that prey as well is second to none. Take a look at this clip here. Look how quickly this white shark recognizes what's swimming towards it is a prey item. You can literally pinpoint the exact moment this shark clocks it. Bang, right there. It's a matter of milliseconds before then launching its attack and that seal is gone. But if we look at how the bites on surfers take place, it isn't really similar to how they predate on seals at all. More often than not, surfers are targeted at relatively low intensities and low speeds. We can see that from the damage caused to humans and and their boards after an attack compared to the damage caused to seals or even seal decoys. From the shark attack data that we have, sharks aren't biting these surfers very hard, although admittedly even a low intensity bite from a three and a half meter white shark is still enough to cause serious damage to the human body. But it's not as hard as they'd be biting a seal. From a speed perspective as well, when sharks end up biting surfers, it's not at the same high speeds as it would be if it were a seal. Take the Mick Fanning incident. This is a very stereotypical attack on a surfer. It's more of a rolling strategy, which looks pretty slow and messy. That right there is not how sharks are attacking seals. Surfers aren't hit with that catastrophic breaching behavior. They're bumped and rolled over. So if we can see that the two attack strategies are different, why would sharks be striking surfers differently if they were confusing them with seals? The way they bite is a very low energy interaction, which isn't at all like the energetically costly breaching behavior seen in seal predations. So if we presume that the mistaken identity hypothesis here is incorrect, what's the most logical reason for sharks biting humans? Now that right there is a fairly simple question, but the answer for it here is far from simple. In reality, there's a number of different reasons as to why sharks bite people, but perhaps the most common of the more would be their exploratory or investigative behavior. Many large shark species are opportunistic predators who rely on their ability to optimize their environment and the resources available to them. And some of them on occasion will eat what they can to survive. And the best way for them to survive is to try out lots of different items in their environment to see if they can eat it. We can see this in loads of videos where sharks investigate novel objects like seaweed, buoys, outboard motors, marine debris, you name it, they're checking it out. Unlike many other wild animals, Animals, sharks have no parental care, and because of that, they aren't taught how to catch their prey. They just have to figure it out on their own. So it makes the most sense for them to investigate lots of different new things in their environment in the hope that it's food. And the main tool they have available to them for that investigation? their mouths. The exploratory bite hypothesis does go a bit further in explaining why sharks bite humans, regardless of how murky the water is, the color of a wetsuit, or how close they were swimming to the natural prey species of that shark. The fact that sharks regularly abandon human victims after the initial bite again lends itself more to the exploratory bite hypothesis, because that shark has rejected that potential prey item because it didn't taste right. 
not because it mistook the potential prey item for its natural prey. Now, don't get me wrong here, this isn't the one and only reason as to why sharks bite humans. Like I said earlier, there's a bunch of different reasons. Sometimes they're investigating to see if it's palatable, sometimes they're being territorial over a particular area, sometimes they're guarding their resources like an already killed prey item, and sometimes they're just biting out of self-defense. In all of those situations that I've just listed there, external factors can also make a difference as well, like water visibility or how hungry that particular shark was. We know firsthand that on very rare occasions, sharks will bite humans more than once and eventually go on to consume them, so there are clearly other factors involved. And for all we know, they could occasionally make the odd mistake. I don't think that's the most common reason for bites at all, but on rare occasions, it might happen. Those external factors will always play some kind of a role in certain shark attack situations. But you can see the answer to why do sharks bite humans isn't just one answer. It's often lots of things all combining together. If you did like that answer though, make sure you hit that like button below. If we take a step back here for a minute though and have a look at the animal kingdom as a whole, there's a few large animals out there that are known to hunt and kill humans. Tigers, lions, crocodiles, and polar bears are a few that spring to mind. And these are all large, powerful wild animals. But when these animals do end up killing a human, you don't see people trying to say that it was a mistake. No one's ever mentioned the mistaken identity hypothesis for a crocodile or a polar bear when they've killed a person. So. Why was it being mentioned for sharks? Having thought about this for quite a long time, one line of thinking seems to come back to me again and again. And it's, was the mistaken identity hypothesis partly created to try and deflect blame from an animal that has been and is still being heavily persecuted around the world. Sharks are in trouble, there's no question about that. And our desire to stop them from being demonized is clearly thought to play a pretty central role in helping to conserve them as a species. So what better way to deflect that blame than to attribute their bites on humans as a mistake? As in, ah, they can't help it, their eyesight isn't great and they just do it accidentally. I do get it, I understand why some people might have thought that would have been the appropriate thing to say, but maybe it doesn't quite have enough scientific backing for it to be true. For me, it just oversimplifies these animals massively. You don't just evolve on this planet over hundreds of millions of years to just regularly make mistakes. And I think if we were a bit more honest with people about sharks and what they're occasionally capable of, there'd be a bit more respect there. Over the last eight or nine years of studying sharks and spending time in the water with them, I've found that my opinion on mistaken identity is starting to change. And as more and more research comes out, we're of course gonna learn more about how these animals operate. For me though, it's about carefully treading that balance between outright fear and hatred of sharks on one side and then a healthy respect and admiration for them on the other. Because people respect lions, tigers, and bears as potentially dangerous animals, but at the same time, they know they're ecologically important wild animals in their respective habitats. And I think people should feel the same about a handful of shark species. Not all of them, I mean, nowhere near all of them, just a handful of them. Probably about 1% of all shark species in total. And if you guys wanted to know exactly which shark species that I'm talking about here, I tell you all about them in this video right here. In it, we have a look at which shark species are potentially the most dangerous to humans. And I reckon the number one is not the one you'd expect. So if you wanted to know which one that was, make sure you check it out here.